How to make a pace and compass map. At this point, we want to be where we've already taken our degree readings with the compass, right? If we're doing a building, we should have four degree readings, one for each corner to corner side. So four degree readings and four paces, right? From corner A to corner B, corner B to corner C, and so on, starting at the datum. So we have our information, right, that we've written down. Now the key is how are we gonna make a map out of this, right? And it's actually pretty straightforward. In a moment, I'm gonna show you how to make a map in real time. So yes, I know how to do it. Yes, you might screw up once or twice, but overall, you'll see it's really not, really doesn't take that long. You just have to follow these instructions. Now first, with our data, we want to turn the paces that we've taken into meters. How do you do that? It's really simple. If you took 100 paces, you just multiply it by your magic number. What's your magic number? Your magic number is your ratio of paces per meter. Now we've already figured that out, right? We did 25 meters. We walked 25 meters. For me, I take 30 steps per 25 meters. So what that means is my ratio is 0.83, right? 25 over 30. That's my ratio. Why am I telling you this? Because once you get that ratio, in my case 0.83, I just multiply my paces by that ratio and I'm good. That's the length in meters. I know it feels weird. I know you're like, what? Is that magic? Yes, it is. Do you need to understand it? No, you don't. You just need to do what I'm telling you. Just turn your mind off and do what I say. So for your first side of a building, if you paste 100 paces, in my case, I'm gonna multiply it by 0 0.83, 83 meters. So before you even start making any map, just do the math, right? Change your paces to meters, that is step one. Don't erase your paces, just line through them just in case you mess up. You wanna keep your data. It's good archeological technique to always keep your data no matter what. So you've changed to meters. So now you have these four uh, degrees and then you have four meter distances with them. And actually, when we do this in class, of course, we add a fifth point away from a building. So actually you'll have five, right? Five degrees, five distances. So what do we do then? Then we get two things. We get a protractor and we get a ruler. Make sure that your protractor is a 360 degree protractor. That's the big deal. Don't use the old school 180s, all right? Uh, these are relatively inexpensive and a 360 degree protractor will just make your life much easier. So go with one of these. Now, what comes next? We're gonna get a piece of paper we have our data ready to roll, and then we're gonna start by putting a datum in the middle of the paper because the datum is where we measure from, right? What our starting point. And then we will put the points on the piece of paper and make the map. I'll do it in real time. I'm gonna change the, the camera angle and we're gonna try it out. Okay, here's what I got. I got a big purple dry erase board. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna draw the map in real time for you guys. And hopefully my uh, hand doesn't get in the way too much as we do this. So first off, on your piece of paper, you're gonna start in the middle, anywhere in the middle generally. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to measure into the middle or something like this, but just in the middle of your, of your page, you're gonna put a datum triangle with a dot in it, right? So that's step one. And we're also gonna put a scale on our map, 
uh, we are going to do one centimeter equals 10 meters because that's the easiest one for the math. If you feel really comfortable on this, you could also do one centimeter equals five meters. It'll give you a, one centimeter equals five will give you a slightly larger map, which is nice, especially if you did a small structure. We are also going to add a north arrow because this is this is real stuff. This map will be uh, scaled to scale and it will be pointing to north. This this will be pointing to north. That's real. So now we're set. We're ready to roll. Oh, we can also put our name here. Uh, let's uh, let's let's put some coordinates on here. So I'll just make some up that'll that'll vaguely make, make sense. Let's say my first uh, my first degree in distances was uh, uh, we'll we'll go we'll go datum to point two. Uh, it was thirty degrees, and I've done my math, so it happened to be um, uh, fifty two meters. Let's say that now. When you do your math for your for your distances, you're gonna get a fraction, 52.265. Don't worry about it. Just round it to the nearest nearest whole number. So here's my first here's my first reading. I'm going to take my 360 degree protractor. I'm gonna put the center of it right on the datum. Right there's a little tick in the center right there. Zero is up. Uh, 180 degrees is down and 90 to the right. You'll always notice there's 90 to the right. My first point is 30 degrees. I'll make a tick right there at 30. Now I'm good. I'm going to remove this. We're going to do our measurements in centimeters. So, because one centimeter to 10 meters, this is 52, 52 meters. If I'm doing a one centimeter to 10 meter map, the conversion for this 52 meters is gonna equal 5.2 centimeters. There you go. So I'm 30 degrees at 5.2 centimeters. I take my ruler, which is in centimeters. I put the zero right on the dot, right on the center of the datum. And I lay the ruler along where the tick is. The tick is just there to get the angle of my ruler right. Then I'm gonna put a dot right at 5.2. There we go. That's, I don't know if you can see that or not. It's 5.2. So at 5.2 centimeters, there, there's my first point. Datum to point two, 30 degrees, 5.2 centimeters. Then I can erase my tick because I no longer need it. Now. Here's the part that everyone screws up on. The, it's the next bit, point 0.2 to point 0.3. Let's say that it's uh, uh, 120 degrees and this one is uh, 39 meters. Okay, so now a couple things go down that you gotta get right. Now you move your protractor to the new point. I'm telling you, man, that is the number one mess up. Sure, let's make sure this is correct. There we go. Zero up, 180 down, 90 to the right. So I am centered over my second point. Now this one's 120 degrees. Now I go to 120 degrees. Let's see, where are we? There we are, 120. The reason why I'm looking once or twice here is most of these 360 degree protractors are gonna be numbered this way and this way. So we wanna to remember to keep using the one that's correct. In this case, it's actually the lower numbers because we wanna use the numbering system that goes clockwise. So I got 120 degrees, I'm good. Now it's 39 meters, so it's gonna be 3.9 centimeters. 3.9 centimeters, all right. Now I measure, I got the zero over my new point. I use the tick as my angle. There we go, 3.9. Oh, it's gonna be right there, 3.9. Now I erase, keep going the same thing. It, once you get the, the feel for it, you'll, you'll be able to, to continue with pretty smoothly here. So the third one, 
I'll, I'll align over the new point. The third one will be like 0.3 to 0.4. Let's add, let's say it's 210. I'm giving myself a perfect uh, square. And let's say it again returns to 52 meters. So now I go 210 degrees. 210 is right there. Move this away. This time I'm measuring 5.2 again. Here's my uh, centimeters on here. This time from the new dot, of course, angling along to the, to the tick, 5.2, and so on. Let's make sure that's not erased. Um, and then I'll have one more. Going back, it'll be 0.4 back to datum to give myself a perfect world. Let's add 90. Hey, I did, it's 300 degrees, and let's say it's back to 39. So that would take me directly back to the datum. Now we often have a fifth point, datum to 0.5, and, it's, and we took that back at our datum, and that's gonna be like to a tree or to a bush, something away from the building. And that'll just have its own number, like, like uh, away from the others. Let's just say it's 270 degrees at, uh, let's make it far, 111 meters. So 270 degrees is going to be right about this uh, out here uh, going this way. And, uh, and, uh, and this would be 11.1 centimeters. It's going to be like somewhere out here like this. So now I have all my points in. What's left to do? You want to connect the dots with your ruler. You already have a ruler with you. So now just starting at the datum, I go connect, 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 and then connect. And then I'll label this building. This is the, we'll just say it's the LMC building. I'll label my final point. Let's say we took a degree reading out to a tree. Uh, and that's basically it. There you have it. Notice I have a data sheet down here of my original data. I want you guys to have that as well. So the, the key things I'm looking for are the map like this with the extra point, the, um, the north arrow, the correct uh, scale, your name, and then this data sheet. And you can, you know, you can make it nicer with, with little columns. These are like, you could call them points or whatever, um, degrees and distance, whatever you would like. There's other names you can use, as long as it's organized. Depending on your map, sometimes if the map ends up over here, you can move this over here or over here. Map making, there is an art to it. So some artistic flair, not for, not for drawing the points, you don't go, well, artistically, I think it should be a 217. No, you go with your points. But the presentation of it, there's, there's a, little, a little wiggle room of, of where to put the ancillary stuff. So that's how it's done. One last note. I made it easy for myself. I gave myself perfect degrees that are 90 degrees away from each other. In archaeology, it's often not the case. You're going to get readings that are a little like off or not quite right, or it's, it's not a perfect square. You'll, you can end up with something that's, you know, a little like that. That's okay. That's okay. What I care about is you go with your real data. If there's something really screwed up like this, I want you to add little asterisks at the bottom and tell me why your map's messed up. This is actually pretty easy to tell. There was one wrong degree reading taken, I believe it was here. Because um, all these others make a perfect square. This one's off. And you just say, uh, uh, with one last sentence, degree reading from datum to point two or whatever was incorrect. What I care about here is that you recognize your mistakes. Because in archaeology, especially in mapping like this, they will happen. And the key to success in map making and archaeology is not not making mistakes because you will have them. It's in realizing those mistakes and fixing them as you go.